Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, tonight I'm actually gonna wax the car. It's been it's been a while since I put another coat of colonite on. Um, I do plan on ceramic coating it in the spring, um, but for now I have um, Jessicar Power Lock colonite 845, and, and I top it with bead maker after every wash. Uh, so that's what's on the car right now. Uh, it's still beading really well, but um, I just saw some some of like mainly down at the bottom and everything is starting to fail a little bit. Uh, just from all the salt and stuff and uh, the weather that we've been having in Jersey So I figured I would put another layer of coal night on it to kind of get it through winter and then um, I will uh, In the spring I'll do my full detail which I'll probably do a video on do a full uh, paint correction and um, I'm gonna uh, ceramic coat it with G-Technic uh, CSL and uh, two layers of EXO uh, but for now I'm just gonna do um, just another layer of colonite just to kind of get me through, kind of top it off. Uh, it, looks, it looks really good, it's still beating really well, but I figured I'd make a video, because um, a lot of people always ask me what products I use and everything, uh, just kind of my methods and all that, so I figured I would show uh, you guys just how I actually wax the car, which is, I don't do any different than anybody else, um, but I figured I would set up the camera and just kind of walk you through it. Um, it is pretty cold out tonight, uh, I think it's in the 30s, so um, that's why I got my hat on. Um, so it might, it might react a little bit differently than it normally does. I know cold night in the, in the heat uh, after the application, like the next day, um, it's, it's called sweating, which it'll um, bring up the oils and stuff from the, from the wax, and it'll look like, it looks like you almost didn't wipe the wax off, but um, it reacts differently in the winter and the colder weather, uh, so it probably won't do that at least as much. Um, but I'll, either way, it's the same way I, I apply it in the summer, summer or winter. But um, but yeah, let's get started. Uh, I guess you saw in the beginning kind of like a little bit of a montage. Um, uh, I guess of the of the stuff that I use to wax it. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's just Colnet 845, a couple um, of my uh, wax microfibers, and an applicator pad. Very simple. Um, I'll walk you through the process, and uh, I guess I'll just talk my way through it. And anything that comes to mind, I'll talk about it like I normally do. So. Stay tuned. All right, so as you saw in the beginning, all I'm using is Colonite 845. Um, it's not really you won't. I, I, at least for me, if I didn't if I didn't hear about this from Matt Mormon years and years and years ago, before he even started Obsessed Garage, um, I never I never would have thought to use this. This is something that I probably wouldn't even have bat my eye at. Um, I've used a ton of other different waxes over the years, uh, but Matt swears by this stuff. Um, so I picked up this bottle probably six years ago, um, and it completely changed my mind on 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 wax. Um, this stuff, it, at least with uh, lapis blue, it leaves it, the paint looks so deep. Um, it does a really good job. It lasts a long time. I used to be a really big fan of, I still am, uh, a P21S, um, but it, it doesn't have the longevity, longevity that this has. Um, so I just, my, now I prefer only using Colonite when I do wax a car. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna do a ceramic coating in the spring, but um, this is like my tried and true that a lot of people end up using now because of Matt. Uh, but this stuff's really, really good. So you can get it on Amazon. I think it's like, I don't even know. 15 bucks, something like that. It's pretty cheap. And like I said, this has lasted me five or six years. <laughs> and uh, I put it on, I mean, not, not a lot, a lot, but maybe two, three times a year. Um, so it gets, you get a lot of use out of it. And um, it's much cheaper than a lot of the other waxes out there that a lot of people swear by. Uh, so I would definitely go and, and uh, I actually have a link in my on the uh, description below on my Amazon links for this stuff, so um, if you're looking to pick it up, use the link. Um, but yeah, let's get started. Pretty straightforward. Um, a lot of people don't realize that it has to be pretty pretty liquidy. Um, you know, it, it, in, the, in different weather and stuff, it, it gets a little chunky and a little, um, it almost looks like carb carnuba. All I'm doing, I have an old app, well not an old, but well, I guess it is old, but I have an applicator that I use only for colonite. Um, it's an old Meguiar's pad. I just like the size of it. I like using foam pads just because um, I feel like it's it's not as rough. Uh, Adams has those hex those hex uh, pads that I do I've used before, but they tend to be a little too big for me, and I feel like they're a little too rough. This one's I don't know. I like the uh, 
how soft it is. But, um, but yeah, simple pad, coal night. All I do is pour a little bit on. You don't want this stuff, you actually don't want to use too much of it. Um, using too much actually creates a, a lot more work um, when you go to take it off. So using less is actually more and much easier. Uh, so pretty, pretty straightforward. Like I said, the car is already clean. I cleaned it this afternoon, um, so I don't have to wipe it down or anything. It's just been sitting in here. And <clears throat> so I'm just gonna, you don't have to do circular motions, but I just prefer to do it because I feel like I get a better coverage doing that. Um, let's see, put a little bit more on actually. With the, uh, I guess the first pass or the first, you know, the because the pad's not primed really. It doesn't really have a lot of product on there. So you want to do a little bit more just so it gets nice and covered. But this is the process. It's pretty straightforward. Like I said, there's no special technique or anything like that. This is just the way I do it. Um, I do this every maybe three to four months. It depends on, I guess, the weather that we're having. And, um, <coughs> you know, just, I always keep an eye on it, how it's beating and, and how the water's running and off, running off the paint and everything like that. Plus, you can always tell how by, by feeling it. Um, didn't really, really need it. But since it is winter, literally just started yesterday. Um, you know, I wanted to make sure I had a good coating on the car before you know, the weather does really get bad. Um, And I guess I'm, I'll show you, I guess, the path I take across the car of how, you know, from where I start to where I, where I end up finishing. I don't know why this is the way I started. I just end up working. I always start at this corner of the car and kind of work my way around. I usually do all the tops first, and then I start back at the fender, do all the sides, um, and, you know, and get the bottoms and everything. And that way, it's just, I, I stay more organized. Um, you know, it's just the way I've been doing it over the years and that's just my method. So it's easier for me to keep track because, you know, I have, I have decent lighting in this garage. So, um, you know, you can see where you're going sometimes if, you know, you don't have that great of lighting, it's kind of hard to see, um, and you kind of miss some spots and everything like that. So, but I love how this stuff goes on. It literally feels like butter. Just want a nice even coverage. Like I said, you don't want to put um, too much on, get it really thick. It, get, it, it gets really hard to get off. So the, actually the thinner layer is much better to do. So I did the hood. Let me get you a different shot. I'm going to start over on the uh, mirrors over here. Now, this has held up really well. Last time I waxed it, um, or I detailed it in May when I did, you know, the full paint correction, and um, you know, I did the Jess car and all that, and <clears throat> I did that in May. Um, so I think I waxed it one other time, not because I really needed it, but because I think I just wanted to, kind of just give the car a little bit more. Um, a little bit more pop. Now, which you know, you can never do too much. You can, you can actually layer this stuff. So if you wanted to do a couple layers, uh, you know, go right ahead. It's actually better to do that. But I usually just end up doing one, one layer, which I find to be more than enough. Uh, I've used a couple other waxes over the years. Uh, one of them I used to be really a really big fan of. It's called uh, Auto Glim HD. I believe it's. At the time, it wasn't sold uh, in the U.S. So I think it was overseas. I think it was in Europe or Germany or somewhere, somewhere over there. Um, so it took a while to get, but I used I used to use that on my M3, and it used to look so good. Uh, I think I ended up throwing it away 
half there a while because I ended up not using it. It just sat and then it got all uh, got all like crummy. So I just you know ended up throwing it away. Um, uh, <coughs> I told you I used the P21S, which is also a really good wax. Um, I really like how that one goes on as well. But like I said, I don't I didn't find it to be um, it didn't last as long as this. You know, I, I ended up doing all this work, uh, you know, putting the wax on the car and everything, and then, you know, like a month later, I would find myself seeing it failing in, in parts and everything, and, you know, that's kind of upsetting, because I don't want to wax a car once a month. That's, that's a lot. You know, when I used to have the time back in the day when I was younger, I didn't mind doing that just because, you know, I... <laughs> That's, I didn't have anything else to do, so I would just keep doing, keep waxing it. And, oh man, this car needs to be clay barred. You can hear it doesn't sound that great. That's that's the one. I guess another. I, I forgot to mention this actually in my um, five things I hate or dislike about my STI or hate or whatever whatever you want to say. Um, one, I guess one of the big reasons why one thing that I really do not like about this car is the paint. While it looks good, it sucks keeping it uh, like contaminant free. It's uh, Subaru is actually often known as uh, sticky paint, or the paint on Subaru is known as sticky paint, simply because it just it's everything sticks to it, and it just like constantly feels rough. You know, obviously when you detail it, it feels great. I feel like it doesn't last long. You know, it, it ends up being grabbing everything that it touches. And it feels like crap after like two months. So that is one good thing. Another one good thing about German cars is they have really good paint for the most part. It's really hard paint, so it is harder to correct. But um, it doesn't get like this after. So as you can see, I'm just doing all the tops. I always end up doing the mirrors too. Um, you know, it's, it, it's kind of the same method that I do while I wash the car. You know, I just work from the top down. Um, that's simply just, you know, the way I do things, a lot, a lot of, the way a lot of people do things, simply because it's easier to keep track and usually the bottom of the car is dirtier than the top, so you work your way down. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, that's the process. I'll get you some other shots um, as I'm doing on the side of the car and everything like that. Uh, you know, and obviously when I'm done, I'll give you kind of a recap. Well, I'm gonna obviously take, I'll take it off, so I'll, I'll do a, I guess I'll talk you through that, but um, I'm gonna go around, finish the car, get the wax on the car, let it cure for a little bit, and then, uh, you know, we'll wrap this up.
so <coughs> time to get the wax off definitely hazed up um, it's gonna be oh yeah <laughs> I love taking wax off it sounds kind of weird but it's a good feeling especially when it comes off smoothly the paint just feels so nice with it um, the one thing about coal night it is a little oily so uh, you know as a matter of fact let me put some gloves on I actually probably I told myself I was gonna put it on before I put the wax on because your hands get all like weird feeling um, but let me put them on now okay so plus it adds a little bit more grip on the towel too that I found so basically I know it's just simple stuff but somebody might not know how to do it so um, a good thing to do is have two towels on hand so you have basically the towel that you're taking the wax off with and then you can kind of have a, a trailing towel so it kind of follows up um, and gets anything remaining <coughs> yeah you can tell this spot right here a little a little heavy so there we go it came right off um, but yeah having two towels is really nice or it, it helps a lot while doing this uh, because the main towel that you use kind of gets gunked up a little bit and uh, if you just constantly use one towel it's just it's gonna get really smeary and it's gonna be a pain in the butt to take off so having the two towels really helps and you want to flip it a lot a lot of people do the quarters like they'll do it in half like that they'll flip um, but I like doing I think it's a bigger gets the job, job done a lot quicker if you have it folded in half um, yeah, man this paint feels so much better now I was feeling a little rough but I am looking forward to ceramic coating it I have ceramic coated many cars I've never done my own um, you know I've done friends cars and stuff and you know, I, I, I don't know if you know but I um, detail on the side once in a while for some returning customers and some friends that come to me to get it done um, and I, I ceramic coat their cars and you know I've seen it in action and everything and it's awesome uh, I've just been really hesitant to do mine because I do like how Colonite or Just Car and Paralock and uh, Colonite react on this paint it just looks so deep um, and it's not as permanent so you know if I it's easy to take off if I made a mistake or something or you know a swirl happens and I need to polish it out you know it's a little bit easier with ceramic coating that's it's not so easy you know taking because basically what you gotta do is you gotta buff the the coating off first which is a pain in the butt um, and then you know obviously correct the paint and then you gotta reapply the ceramic coat and you basically gotta would need to do the whole panel that you're doing again so it's even um, I mean the good thing about the coating that I use which is I told you before is G Technic CSL and XO um, it uh, it's, it's a lot more user-friendly than most coatings so you can't really mess it up and you can't layer it so you know if I say if I did the I ceramic coated the whole hood and then down the road I had a you know a scratch here or something and I buffed that out and then I had to reapply it would all be even I wouldn't have to basically do the whole hood again um, but just to keep things even I guess in terms of you know how things are gonna the longevity of it um, you know I just just my OCD would probably be kicking in but that's what I would do it's a little bit more time consuming so but yeah like I said I haven't ceramic coated one of my cars yet I've always done friends cars or clients cars or whatever and um, I've been really happy with how it works how it reacts and lasts and everything and I know a lot of my friends and clients say they love it so I am planning on doing it to this car uh, curious like I said the, the current um, protection that I have on the car it just it adds so much depth to this paint it looks so deep and it, 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 it turns to like a navy dark blue it almost looks black 
uh, you know, in the sun at certain angles, it's, it gets it so deep. And I just don't feel like the coatings do that as much. It um, kind of looks like, like a synthetic. It looks like fake. It doesn't look as deep. I mean, it, be, it, it repels, the hyd you know, it's very hydrophobic. It lasts much longer. You don't have to wax it in between. You do have to do um, some maintenance on some of them, like doing like a, I, for me, I do bead, bead maker, which is like a topping on top of the, top of the coating. So it kind of just helps prolong the longevity of it and makes it last longer. Um, I know with Car Pro, I think you had to do, I forget what it was called, it was like H2O, or no, I forget. Something like that, where you had to do, or oh, reload, that's what it is. Um, you had to do that every once in a while to kind of refresh the coating. You know, I don't want to do it. I mean, it's probably much easier than doing wax and stuff, but I just want to put a coating on, forget about it, have it work for a year or two, and then do it again. You know, with wax and stuff, it only lasts, usually it typically lasts probably six to eight months, uh, depending on where you drive and how you drive and where you park the car and everything. So there's a lot of factors that come into play, but for me, it usually lasts probably about seven to eight months. You know, I, obviously I garage the car, so it's not out in the, the weather all day long. Um, you know, but it is in a parking lot five times a week, basically, you know, at work. So it does see some, you know, it does see weather and stuff. It's not always garaged. It's a daily driver, you know, and it's not a garage queen. Um, so, you know, it typically lasts about that long for me. And then I end up doing it. So it ends up, end up to be around like uh, every, every fall and spring is when I end up doing my details and, and coatings or, uh, you know, reapplying the coating, jeez, uh, reapplying the protection. So not bad. I, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person that enjoys doing this stuff. So it's not like uh, it's a pain. I mean, now that I have kids and, you know, I'm just so busy all the time, I hardly have a moment to myself. Uh, you know, I'm, ceramic coating is looking a little bit more appealing to me. Just it's a little bit less maintenance. I always, I always say that coatings are, are more for people that obviously they care about their car but they just don't have the time to maintain it as often as you would need to if you just waxed it. Um, you know, just because it lasts longer, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more durable. So I always, anybody that comes in saying, hey, you know, I wanna get my car coated, but I, I park it outside all day long, um, or, you know, I don't have the time or the, the tools to properly wash it. So I always recommend coatings. Uh, and they're usually much happier with that just because, you know, they don't have to come back for, you know, a year or two, but we'll see how I like it. I know, I'm sure I'll like it and I'll probably completely convert myself <laughs> once I do it. Cause I've done it, like I said, I've done it on quite a few cars and I really liked how it turned out. So I can only imagine with my own car and just seeing how it looks and performs and everything. It's going to be pretty sweet. Cause I do notice, I do notice like on the bottom half of the car, you know, like under, you know, by the uh, rocker panels or like on the low part of the door, uh, during the winter or like a heavy rain or something, I'll notice the, um, you know, the, the coating or the sealant and the wax kind of, I don't know, it looks like it's not there or it kind of fails because, you know, a lot of the grime and stuff is sitting on the paint. It doesn't, like, you know, the top half of the car will, really, will bead really well, really great. But the bottom half tends to fail really quickly just because it's more susceptible to stuff on the road. I think I got two new towels. I can tell it's starting to get a little smeary. So I'm just, as you can tell, I'm kind of going the same, um, the same path that I went putting the wax on. So everything is on for an even amount of time. You know, where I started and where I finished, you know, I'll start, I'll do the same path taking it off 
So everything had the same amount of time on the car. And yes, I did wax under the wing, if anybody was curious. <laughs> That's just me, don't need it, but hey, I know that it's done. And I didn't miss any parts. I'm the type of person that if I'm gonna do something, I don't necessarily go all out, but if I'm gonna do it, I might as well just get it done. So, so for instance, you know, the bottom of the wing, you don't need to do it, but like, I'm here, might as well just do it. What's the, what's the, you know, what's the point of skipping it? And just knowing it's done just makes me feel that much better anyway. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Obviously, I didn't leave myself enough room back here with the garage door, but. Okay, so I did all the tops, mirrors. So now I, I started. So what I do is I do the tops. And then I go back around and do the one side of the car. Start with the, the fender, the front fender. Work my way back. Go to the other side, do that. And then I usually do the front bumper and then the rear bumper. Uh, for some reason, I always hate doing rear bumper, like the rear of the car. I don't know why. Uh, I think just because it's so intricate and like different angles and everything like that. I don't know, it gets annoying. So let me get my chair actually, so I can get a better view. Plus I'm old. <laughs> I can't stand it anymore. So I don't want to make this video too long. So otherwise it's just the same thing. Me just wiping down a car basically and just rambling. Um, but you guys, I got a lot of good feedback on my, you know, my wash video or, okay. Sorry about that. Camera just randomly stopped. But like I said, I don't want to make this video too long. Um, you know, I just kind of wanted to go over my thoughts. Uh, or, or my process and kind of talk my way through how I wax a car because uh, you know some people a they don't know how to which is totally fine got to start somewhere and B um, you know people are just usually they tend to be pretty interested in how I keep the car in the condition that I keep it in uh, so I thought it'd be informative to anybody um, so I'm gonna go around finish getting the wax off the paint. And then uh, I still gotta do the tires and the windows. And, um, and then I'll kinda do, I guess like a little recap, you know, what I did, and then kinda show you the car when it's done. So let me finish this up, get all the wax off the car, and then uh, we'll finish up the video. All right guys, so I finished um, taking the wax off. I haven't done the windows or the uh, tires yet, but I'll, I'll show you, uh, I guess, you know, I'll walk you through that as well, even though you've seen that before. Um, but I just kind of wanted to show you the finished the finish product of how the paint looks. Uh, every single time I put um, another layer of Colate on, it surprises me and how nice this paint is. <laughs> it's so deep. I don't think it can really show on camera. Just the overall depth of it uh, in person, it looks crazy. Um, I mean, you can kind of see just, I mean, all, all uh, paint on camera looks really clean, but I assure you in person, this paint looks even better than what the uh, camera is showing. Um, it's just so deep. It makes, it totally changes the, uh, the overall color of the blue. It's just, it's like a dark, dark navy blue. Like over here, it looks black. <laughs> which is pretty cool. This color changes from blue to purple to black um, to a dark blue. It's, it's, it's pretty cool, pretty cool color. But, uh, but yeah, that's the, uh, the paint after the cold night application. Um, I'm gonna do the tires next. Then I gotta do the windows as well. Um, so I'll walk you through that and then. All right, so I'm gonna do the tires. This is just basically what I do after every wash. Um, uh, you know, after I obviously I clean the clean the wheels, clean the tires, and everything. But this is the last step. Uh, it's you know, I guess the dressing or the coating or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I'm a fan of uh, Adams VRT. I also like CarPro Pearl, uh, but I've used that in the past, and I actually ended up turning my tires brown. Uh, if you do dilute it though, it, it it is a little bit better. 
but for whatever reason, just straight VRT, um, you know, in terms of simplicity, just using it right out of the bottle, uh, I found to be the easiest. You know, you don't have to dilute it or anything like that. It leaves a good, good matte finish. Um, you know, it's not, it doesn't look like globs or gel or anything like that. It's, it's just a really nice uh, overall finish. I just prefer it. And it lasts long and it does a good job. Um, so I have actually an Adams uh, tire applicator. I like it with this because it has the grooves here, so it kind of gets in all the little, the little letters and numbers and everything on the, on the tire. So you just squirt a little bit on, and then just wipe it on. Very simple. Like I said, um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't leave a really wet finish. I don't like when it's super slimy and slings all over the paint. Um, you know, a lot of people even will go around and, and wipe off the excess of this after they apply it. But I prefer the finish just like this. Um, you know, it's a little wet, but it doesn't look doesn't look like goopy or anything. But doing this, I think this is kind of like the cherry on top after a wash. It just makes it look the car look that much cleaner and that much better plus your tires look way nicer so as you can see it has a nice finish uh, it's not too wet it's not too too uh, gross or anything um, and it lasts a long time which i really do like so i'm going to go around finish the tires i'll do the windows as well kind of talk you through that uh what i use and everything and then uh then we'll go from there all right so i'm on to the windows uh, i'm just trying to finish this up quick it's about 10 30. Uh, I got work tomorrow so I want to get this done. <laughs> I want to finish this video up so I can get it up for you guys. <clears throat> what I'm doing I'm just simply cleaning the windows. I use uh, Adam, you can't read that from here but it's Adam's glass cleaner. I know a lot of you are probably questioning. They are in different bottles. Uh, I have a different uh, <clears throat> bottle set that I just pour them into because I prefer the cleaner look and um, you know, just label everything. Pretty, pretty generic. I don't really put, you know, specific Adam stuff, Adam names on there because sometimes I do change it up. But for the most part, I use a lot of Adams. Um, you know, there's other specific stuff, like obviously the coal night is not Adams. Um, you know, and the coatings and a few other things that I use aren't Adams. But most, most of the stuff I use is Adams. And I linked a lot of that stuff below. And to, for Amazon links, so if you do decide to um, purchase any of this stuff, just click the links, it'll bring you right to it. I get a little kickback, which will help with the channel, obviously, and we're all happy. So I have a specific window towel. Uh, I forget what this is, um, but it's it's like a waffle weave. Um, I think it's by Microfiber Madness. I forget, but this is my windows towel. Window towels. Uh, I fold it into quarters and. I use one side to clean it and the other side to wipe it dry. Um, windows are detailer's worst enemy because if you mess up windows, the whole car looks terrible. Uh, but I found over the years that my process works pretty well and my windows stay pretty smear free and clean. Um, so I basically, you know, I just spray it on, wipe it down on one side, then I'll go around on the other side and make sure everything's off. Some people use two towels to kind of follow up, but I find that a little excessive and I found that my just doing this seems to do the job. Um, the only thing I recommend about a window cleaner is if you do have tint, use something that's ammonia free because if you use something with ammonia, uh, which I believe Windex has ammonia, I forget, but I think they sell it without ammonia and stuff. But for the most part, basic Windex or something kind of stronger than that, uh, it does have that in there and if you spray it on a tint, it'll uh, damage the tint. So you don't want to do that. So get something. I always make sure that I don't, uh, I get something that's ammonia free. For the most part, I use Adam's window cleaner um, or glass cleaner. Uh, I've used, one of my favorites I've used in the past is kind of like a detailer secret. Not many people use it, but it's uh, Eagle One. I think it's called 2020 Vision or something. This was years and years ago uh, that I used to use this stuff. I don't use it anymore. I should though. But I absolutely loved it. I never had any streaks on my windows. Uh, the stuff was so good. It was such a generic thing. You can get it at like AutoZone or Pet Boys or where, you know one of those. Um, and it was pretty inexpensive. 
and it just did the job so well. I used to love that stuff. I don't know actually know why I stopped using it. I think more so it was just easier to get uh, the atoms since I was getting uh, you know a bunch of atom stuff, and I just like getting you know not necessarily sticking with one brand, but sometimes it's just easier because if a company has you know kind of an all-in-one package and I like the products you know it's just easier to buy everything from one place but maybe I'll go back to it one day and kind of compare now and see what I think maybe my mind's changed but that stuff was awesome but, but yeah I'm going around doing the exterior with the same process you know doing the, the cleaning first and then wiping it down the other side and then um, I'm gonna do the interior same same way and it, and I'll be done with the windows. All right, so we are done. After I said I was done like 20 times in the video, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, so <clears throat> I did a basic wash. You know, just foamed the car down, did a normal wash. It was really, really dirty. I haven't washed it in, you know, three, three to four weeks, which is very long for me. So it gave me a lot of, uh, a lot of anxiety driving this around <laughs> for the last couple of weeks. Um, but like I said, it's, the weather is terrible. I just didn't have a chance and I'd rather have the car really dirty than constantly wiping it down after every drive and just uh, having a bigger chance of introducing swirls and scratches and stuff. So I just let the car get as dirty as possible and then I wait until I can do a proper wash, which is what I did today. <clears throat> just cleaning the car and making it look this good again. Just totally renews uh, my love for the car. Uh, you know, cause when it gets dirty and everything, you kind of, you start looking at it, you're like, ah, you know, this doesn't look as good, and well, uh, you know, you start getting some weird thoughts. But after you clean it and get it looking good again, um, kind of renews your, your renews your love for the car. Um, and every single time, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get new wheels. But then I clean them, and I'm like, man, I'm not selling these wheels. <laughs> um, but I am looking at uh, the, I am actually looking up to change the wheels in the springtime. Uh, I'm looking at the Wet Sports uh, TC 105Xs. I'm also looking at the uh, tried and true Volks TE 37s, uh, either the Sagas or the SLs, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure what color yet, but I am looking at either bronze or the Diamond Dark Gun, Diamond Dark Gun Metal, or maybe silver, I don't know if I'll go there. Uh, but di dark, you know, like a darker color on this car, or this color at least, I think looks best. So we'll see, I'm not, I'm not sure if I wanna, dump about $3,500 into wheels right now, but uh, the wet sports are looking pretty right at the top of the list right now. I think they look really good. I had a set of the TC 105 N's uh, on my WRX before and I really, really love them. Um, so we'll see, but this is how the car is staying. I'm not doing anything until the spring, probably in terms of mods, at least. Uh, I still have my headlight stuff, you know, the sea lights and the uh, smoke corners that I haven't done yet. I'm trying to find some time, hopefully, I'll get them done over the winter. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. Uh, you know, just with the time that I just don't have. Uh, but, but yeah, the car's clean. Uh, the car is waxed, so it's good for uh, until the spring, until I do my full, you know, paint correction and, and do the ceramic coating. Uh, I'm really happy. Every single time I put colonite on here, it just, it blows me away. Uh, I'll look so awesome. So clean, so shiny, so blue. <laughs> so that's the video for today. Pretty simple. I know many of you obviously know how to wax a car, uh, but you know, you never know somebody kind of strolling through and saying, you know, I'm not sure how to wax my car and you know, just kind of getting into detailing or something like that. And um, I know I'm getting a lot of questions about, you know, what, what steps you should do to, before pra uh, waxing and everything, but I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, I do enjoy doing all this kind of stuff. So if you do have questions, just ask them below. Um, obviously, you know, doing a full paint correction and, and claying the car and, do, and doing some iron X, getting rid of all the iron and all that. Uh, some paint, you know, doing a, a full paint correction and all that is obviously ideal before you wax a car, uh, but it's not necessary if your car's, you know, the paint's in good shape. Uh, but if, you know, this, that's obviously a good, good measure to do all that stuff um, if you want to get your car, car's paint up to, up to par. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, pretty straightforward video. I uh, appreciate you guys watching, appreciate all the comments and new subscribers and everything. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to putting out some more videos. Uh, this is a couple days before Christmas. I'm not sure when I'm going to get this out. So hopefully it is before Christmas. And if it is, Merry Christmas. And I will see you guys in the next video.